Previously on Describe Your Kill. See you later, today. I'm just off to the business home. <laughs> Is there any establishment in this city that you know of that shows a horse in profile? Well, I look like I don't know what a horse is. Malachi definitely thinks he's a leader. I don't want to go to Eric and Ash. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome back. I believe Wilhelm himself was expressing deep interest in that. Uh, he, he was actually hoping you could tutor him on some of the finer points of it. He's, he's contemplating the second murder. Who's been eating my kippers? I believe we do have matters of a slightly more serious nature. Don't stop now, it's just getting interesting. Maybe we could just wait outside while... Uh, we'll <laughs> no, I've got a great little ditty. Ditty. Please, great Malachi, ditty. please. There you see an entry for the Stirrup and Barding Forge. Oh god, I want to talk to the donkey so bad. Come in with your Absalom guard thing again, because it's clearly worked last time. There's a small sign that reads the Harrow Barrow. I am in here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? Tell me. We are looking for a man of your very specific knowledge and talents. We saw what happened to Hajek. What happened to Hajek? <laughs> I do not have permission to enter your house, <laughs> but I do have permission to kill ya. I'm a famous bard. Welcome back to Describe Your Kill. This is Craig, your benevolent GM. Just a very quick intro before we get into it. As you may have noticed, this episode is extra long as I wanted you to hear how a full, actual, messy combat session would play out for us. And yes, that means a couple of uh, alternative rule interpretations. But hey, we're human and you can yell at us by finding the links at describeyourkill.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Really hope you enjoy it. Here's episode seven of The Death of Destiny. Good evening, boys. Good evening. Good evening. Hiya. Ahoy, hoy. How's everyone feeling this evening? It's been, uh, where, where are we? Episode, what number are we on? Six. You can't just Eight, ask that seven? like that. Right, you've all failed. It is seven. Thank you. It's episode seven. For the listening audience, uh, episode seven today we record and... It is also the day that episode one has gone live. So if anybody is out there still listening to us and have stuck with us through to this episode, um, A, thank you. We're really sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> See, what, have you got nothing else to do? <laughs> because it has been the first time that we've got any kind of feedback on the episode, limited at the moment, of course. But uh, I shared it. For the first time, I don't. How's everyone feel about Facebook at the moment? Come on, you're you're a young guy. Like, what, what's your feelings on Facebook? Never had it. I don't think I ever will. What's it called in Germany? Fassabuka. The fuss. <laughs> fucking bad at a booby. <laughs> bad at a booby. I'm not a capagool. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> the question stands. At at this point, this is racial profiling. <laughs> it's because you also consistently refuse to say Kimon's surname correctly. Uh, Gianna Coppolos. <laughs> oh! 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 Yeah. Hey-o. Got him. You 360 no scoped a man's surname. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Craig, okay. I spoke to I spoke to uh, our dad today. Mm. And, uh, and he said, oh, I, I saw, uh, congratulations, I saw the first episode's out. Yeah, listen to uh, 10 minutes of it. Um, Yeah. I mean, I haven't got a clue what's going on, but it does, don't, yeah, I mean, you're all there, aren't you? <laughs> I would say you, know, you haven't listened long enough because you, you <laughs> to realise we're not, we're not here, we're not all there. I've had a couple of people from work ask me, so, so what is it exactly? Difficult to answer, that one. When you're in a position of slightly senior nature, you don't want to undermine yourself. (laughs) 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 Matt, didn't you, you had an interaction with someone this morning, didn't you? So yeah, I had a doctor's appointment today and uh, it was like an asthma review as well. And uh, the the lovely nurse uh, asked me, 
oh you know so how how is everything and i was like yeah yeah not having any issues not really having to take my inhaler apart from every wednesday after laughing like a ridiculous amount <laughs> and uh, and she was like oh really what is it you what's making you laugh so much and i said and then i had to explain to her oh, well I, oh. i'm doing a pod i had to say the words i'm doing a podcast no! and i felt myself like the air <laughs> like swallowing me up oh, no. and 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 you know, that's that she was really, she was really like, uh, in, well, she seemed really interested. She and wasn't, I said, but, and I, but I said, oh, have you heard of, um, have you heard like Dungeons and Dragons? It's kind of like that. And she was like, my brother plays Dungeons and Dragons and he's got a smoke machine and he's, and they all play miniatures <laughs> and they have like a table and I walk into the room and they all glare at me and then I have to turn around <laughs> and leave. Um, so give me the name of it and I'll send it to him in Swansea. So if you're listening from Swansea, hello to, uh, brother of Roisin, the nurse. Hello. Hello. Also, Hello. what are you doing on Wednesday nights? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we borrow your smoke machine? Yeah. At the end of last session, you finally got the stirrup and barding, the hideout, as we now know, of one Mr. Diral Mernese, the elven owner of the Harrow Barrow. So you pushed in cautiously, of course. Wilhelm was invisible. Aaron saw him. Malachi was none the wiser. You find the Harrow Barrow. You also see a door with some light under it, which is quickly extinguished. Wilhelm then uses his, was it ventriloquist's ring? Yes. So you use the ring, <laughs> scare the shit out of him. There's a bit of a, 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 a kerfuffle, a commotion, and eventually kind of get into conversation. And he tells you, uh, well, you tell him that you've been looking for him, that you're in possession of these cards, these powerful Harrow cards, and he is just about to reveal one that he has had in his possession where he is having these visions of being chased or pursued. And as that happened, you were interrupted. Lupin had you stayed outside, of course. It been very different, but you did come into the room. These clowns hadn't made such a complete fuck up of it. I would have stayed outside. Okay, I'm going to show you the creature that burst into the room. It was a tiefling male. I said large last week, but large uh, in a large kind of, for a medium creature. Yeah, large for a yeah. medium creature, <laughs> mechanically medium. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Kamon to describe the tiefling, considering he is the one with the fiendish law tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use that against me, man. I trust you. Uh, okay, he's a red-skinned sort of. He has a goat-shaped head, I would say, with. Two horns coming from his head. He seems to be wielding some sort of lightning magic and has a large battle axe in his hand and is wearing some sort of plate armor. So pretty fearsome looking. Say so. I would agree with that description. So he'd come in, quoting the very words that had left Wilhelm's mouth. This is not the Absalom guard. You do not have permission to enter this house, but I do have permission to kill ya. It's episode seven. Roll for initiative! Roll for initiative! <laughs> Combat time, gentlemen, and this is gonna be juicy. You've got a big opponent. I've eased you in. Now is the time for fighting. Right, so let's let's get some initiative numbers. Foundry's, of course, managing the initiative. Let's start with Kamone. What do you get? A 37 total. A natural Ooh, 16. Ooh, pretty good. Uh, Jason? A re good roll for me. A natural 19 for 39. Ooh, okay. Matty? 34 for Aaron. And Malachi? 34 also. Ooh, uh, I believe if your initiative is tied, you can choose between you who would like to go first. Hmm. Aaron, you rolled, you rolled higher on the dice, to be fair. I will... I'll take it. I'll go first. Why not? No, can. actually, no, 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 no. I'm going to go behind you. I'm going to go behind you because um, if you're going to be singing a, a lovely song, then that uh, I want to get those sweet bonuses. So for our listeners, the room is about a 60 foot square room and the lower right quadrant is kind of missing. So it's an L shaped room. It does look a bit like a Tetris piece. And we're going into combat. This creature has come in with the battle axe, this tiefling, this large medium tiefling creature. 
And with a natural 19 from Mr. Lupin Malice, Jason, you are going to kick off round one. Indeed we are. So Lupin is going to uh, to swear under his breath at having left the door he was looking at. We'll grab hold of the amulet around his neck for the first action, and then we'll focus his attention on this creature and we'll attempt to exploit vulnerability. Ooh, okay. So just quickly remind us about that, Jason. Lupin will scour his experiences and learning to identify something that might repel his foe. He'll retrieve an object from his esoterica, so his collection of random bits and pieces he's collected over the years, with the appropriate supernatural qualities. So for this, I mean, he looks fiendish, so maybe a piece of holy scripture or something like that. And then he'll use that implement to stoke the remnants of its power into a blaze. So. Okay. So, yeah, in effect, a recall knowledge check on the creature. And I believe that Foundry handles a little bit of this. It's not perfect yet, but it does do some of it. Lupin oh, I've rolled a natural 15 there, which looks like a critical success. That is a critical success. So, yeah, uh, so I will remember all of the creature's weaknesses yeah all of its resistances weaknesses and immunities including the amounts and does fancy tell you what they are it does indeed and it's telling me that uh, this creature has no weaknesses no resistances and no immunities however because i'm a thaumaturge i can use something known as the personal antithesis lupin will recall something that is maybe uh, more individual or more personal to this creature and uh, we'll be able to use that to uh, to exploit some of the creature's individual weaknesses. Very good. Okay, so you've done your esoteric law check, which is one action. Mm -hmm. You've discovered with a crit success that there are no weaknesses or resistances on this creature, mm -hmm. and I can confirm that it's true. Then what that means is that you then use this personal antithesis, which gives you a kind of generic damage bonus on all attacks. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. All right. So, uh, yeah, Lupin has done that. That was his second action after drawing his amulet. And then uh, his third action, uh, you know, a flick of the wrist, uh, the sheath will come off his sword cane. And that is Lupin's turn. Very good. Wilhelm, roll a perception check for me, please. All right. Ooh, that's going to be a 30 total. Natural 11. Okay. Because with your 30, you think you got really good initiative roll. But just to the southwest of the room of this abandoned oh, forge, no. you hear a female voice as a creature jumps through and says, You killed Belinda! Ah, oh, for Belinda! <laughs> and drops down with her drawn bow and goes to strike at you. With a natural 15 for 35. That does hit. Excellent. You're going to take 13 Oof. points of piercing damage. Right. As well as... So she's not going to get a sneak attack because I let you... That's why I rolled, let you roll the perception check. But the weapon has been poisoned. And I just need to double check what the damage is. Okay, it's a simple poison. Ah. Oh! Snake eyes. 3, 4, and 2. So two points of poison damage from that. That's her second action. And her third action, Wilhelm, she's going to strike again. There's no reload on that weapon as far as I'm aware. No, reload zero. Uh, gets a 20, which is a critical miss. Yeah, Wilhelm just lets it pass him. You killed my friend! No, that's not her voice. <laughs> <laughs> You killed my... F no. Okay, right. We'll just move on. Next up is... <laughs> is that you? <laughs> Donkey! <laughs> Wilhelm, you're up. All right. Um, Wilhelm sort of looks at her and doesn't seem to be that bothered by her. Um, he draws his rapier and looks over his shoulder to Aaron and says, I'm not going to leave you to die this time. And takes on a defensive stance with his dueling parry. And okay. Is that's gonna, one action? Yeah, that's two actions because I also 
drew my rapier. Okay. And then he's just gonna say to everyone, um, stay, stay close to me. For his last action, just because why not, he's gonna try to intimidate the tiefling by saying, and you, come here. I won't be coming there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's gonna... It's not called intimidate, is it? Demoralize. Right, yeah, I'm gonna demoralize. <laughs> it's gonna be a 28. Against his will DC. Will DC, yeah. It that says it's is a success. success. All right, then. He's gonna be frightened one until the end of his next turn. Okay, and I have that's applied turn. the frightened condition. Thank you, Wilhelm. Aaron spoke point. Welcome to the combat. Thank you very much. So I was going to let Malachi have the initiative. Oh, of course you were, yeah. Okay, do you want to still do that? Yeah, it, yeah. I think I will. Even with the person coming in, I'm going to say let Malachi go first. All right, so uh, Malachi. Malachi starts singing a little tune oh. um, and it goes <laughs> Obviously, it goes a little bit like this. A little bit of Monica, not my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. She wishes a little bit of Rita's all I need. Well, she's tried to kill me before. A little bit of Tina's what I see. And Cass Inspire Courage. Um... Oh, God. This does mean I'm going to have to keep in that nonsense from last week now. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> it is canon. And then turn, turns around to Jessica down here in the in the bottom right-hand corner, the assassin that just uh, dropped down. Andre. Jessica. <laughs> and says... <laughs> what, what do you call a dead assassin? I don't know. Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cast spawn uh, uh, um, uh, that's the action bomb oh, oh my god me. that is critical success it's gotta be <laughs> give yourself that's... a plus two natural 18 <laughs> oh my god 38 so it's an easy crit success yeah so the crit on a critical success the target is distracted and takes a minus three status penalty to perception and will save for one minute target can end the effect early with a retort to your bon mot this can either be a single action that's a concentrate trait or an appropriate skill action to frame their retort yep okay sandra not pleased no so that's two actions so that's inspire courage with bon mot uh i haven't got anything to fling at her okay malachi casts hideous laughter at the joke quickened casted for his one of the day uh, okay, so I need a will save. A will save, please, DC 30. All right, here we go. Ooh, 20. That is a critical failure. Oh, the target dear. falls so prone and can't use actions or reactions for one round. It then, uh, it then suffers the effects of a failure, which is slowed and can't use reactions. Wow, okay, cool. Good use of that the is my turn. casting there. So... You inspired courage, you use the Bon Mot, and then quicken casting allows you to cast a cantrip, a low level cantrip, for one action. Is that right? Or a spell, I think. I hope it was a spell, yeah. It's, it's got yeah, it's at least two levels lower than my uh, highest, okay. which is six. And how often can you quicken cast then, Chris? It's once a day. Okay, cool. All right, so Sandra is prone. Is that a bard spell? It's an occult spell, I think. And, arcane. and it's bard. It just says a bard cantrip or a bard spell. I'm not sure. Yeah, so it, it doesn't count for to. spells that uh, he gained through multi-class. But... Ah, right. I was going to say, that's a weird... Uh, that's yeah, the first time I've seen to, something referred to by a class. It's to prevent a bard from casting fireball at, like, you know, at th that level. So, <laughs> yeah. Malachi All right, thank fireball. you, Malachi. Good turn. That We're is my turn, yeah. I'm going to move now to Aeron Spoke Point. Since the assassin to the south is on the floor, absolutely laughing. And I think, can we just <laughs> acknowledge how cruel that is? That <laughs> she's clearly upset about this joke, but then now he's making her laugh at it. Like, that's, yes. that's dreadful. Okay. <laughs> and her friend is dead. 
<laughs> and a friendster. She's grieving. <laughs> so Aaron is going to bravely step forward towards this devil-looking creature. Okay. And he pushes his hands forward just instinctively, and a burst of energy shoots forward and hits the devil. Hopefully, that's what I'm going to... Is gonna it a uh, ranged attack? It's a spell, like a ranged spell, so... So, yes. Do you roll an attack roll, or does he roll a save? You roll an attack roll. It's a will save, please. So, Aaron pushes up towards this tiefling warrior. Casts a spell, and here comes the will save. Oh, oh that's a fail. 26. Yeah. Yes, so, so uh, basically what everybody sees as this burst of energy hits the devil creature, he starts phasing in and out of realities, and you see one of these realities as it's kind of phasing in and out just rips apart like Infinity War. <laughs> he just like turns to dust as Aeron destroys one of the creature's possible futures, leaving him reeling. He's going to take... Oh, 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 look at those dice! <gasps> 48 points of damage. <laughs> wow. Me that's mental damage. 48 points of mental damage. And because he's uh, because he failed, he's going to be off guard uh, until the start of his next turn. So you see one of his futures How many die. D4 was that? Uh, that was 17. Yeah, so it, it gets I, it increased. Yeah, so it, it's heightened at level 6, so I get an additional 3D4 each and Each where's level. the spell from, Matt? What's the name of the spell? So this is called Unraveling Blast, and it's one of my one of my sorcerer bl bloodline spells for the Harrow. So it's a specifically that in the player's guide, to... is it? Yes, yeah, Thanks, yeah. <laughs> if you listen carefully, <laughs> listen, you can hear Craig flicking through pages. <laughs> you can hear one of Craig's possible futures oh, disappearing. Oh, can I just? I know. have to just revel in this moment because I don't think I've ever. <laughs> I don't hit. think I've ever seen so many. I don't think I've ever hit. Like, I've seen, seen so many dice at level eleven. So yeah, basically a step forward, and wow, the spell. That's my turn. That boom. It's a very effective spell. So not only is he frightened one, he is also off guard, and has taken forty-eight points of mental damage. So that was Aaron's turn. From the southwest corner, dropping through the ceiling. <laughs> Oh my god. Comes Jessica. Here I am. <laughs> also with bow drawn. And targets Malachi with their bow as these assassins what are coming for revenge. Doing? That's a 38 that to hit. Is a hit. Excellent. Okay. You take 14 points of piercing damage. Ah, I do need a perception Ow. check from you, Malachi. Okay. Let's we'll see if you're flat footed. So, just for the listeners, the way I'm rolling this is for them to be surprised, they're going to have to drop through. I'm going to give the players a chance to roll mm. a perception check. And if I think it's high enough, then they won't take <laughs> any <tags laughs> Perception. <laughs> that, 17. No, 27, sorry. 27. 27. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah, enough. So, you're not going right. to take the sneak attack damage, but you are going to take the poison damage. Let's see if I can roll higher Ooh. this time. Yes, yeah, seven points of poison damage. And then with um, her final action, she will take another strike with the composite short bow with a 30 to hit. Just a miss. Just a miss. Okay. Malachi, just to the south of you, you notice oh. that there was a door there that appears to be Ooh. kind of not quite closed. Some might say ajar. And what you notice, Malachi, is that the door itself opens gets kicked open but you see nobody there i'm sure that's fine uh, guys true sides to then guys. from the southwest malachi you see another assassin <laughs> drop oh in my the god ceiling. <laughs> this is rita this is rita who has dropped in with her bow drawn what she is going to do she is going to target you with her short bow and also attempt to strike that's 30 to 30 hit. is a miss. Okay. Can you just roll the perception check for her, though, please? Because if you fail it, you only miss by one, you were going to be flat-footed to this attack, which would lower your AC by two. Natural Ooh, four is a 23. That is a uh, not going to be hit. enough. Yeah, so that is going to be a hit. So here comes your damage. 
That's going to be 12 <laughs> points of piercing damage. There's going to be an additional 2d6 of precision damage. Which is going to roll oh, quite low. Three points of precision damage. And the poison damage, 2d4, for four points of poison damage. Yes, And then sir. you will not be flat-footed to her final attack, but it's probably going to miss with a 21. Nice. Okay. It is D-Ral's turn. I'm going to go in this room if it's okay with you. Uh, I think you should come fight with us if I actually, like, we need, might need I'm your help I'm not a skilled a fighter. I'm not a skilled fighter. Look, you deal with this. And he starts dragging the barrow, the harrow barrow with him. He's got hold of the, <laughs> the handles and he's pulling it back towards the room. And he can see that it won't fit. He goes, oh, fuck this. And he goes inside the room and he closes the door. Cards spilling out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was really Malachi's hoping he was a secret up. barbarian or something, to be honest. <laughs> level, level 12 barbarian. That is the end of his turn. And seeing out the bottom of round one is my creature. Now, let's remember, no this is a creature that stormed on. No longer flat-footed, is that right? Until the start of his turn. Ooh, what to do? Uh, what to do? So many fun options to fuck us over. There are some fun options. Okay, first one is going to cast a spell, and I'm going to see who he's going to cast the spell against. Good, it's going to be Wilhelm. Raises his hand and starts casting a spell. Wilhelm, I'm going to need a will save, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I... It's not an inhaled effect. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it a fear effect? It is not. Okay. Um, the little bag of hair that Wilhelm received from Aaron is going to start shaking uncontrollably. And, <laughs> or you're shaking and, it. No, no, it's gonna <laughs> shake by itself, and some uh, some of the hair comes flying out there and and forming a protective barrier around my head. And um, I'm gonna get a plus one from the root magic. Ah, okay, cool. So this is you using the root magic. The bag of hair is finally coming to play. Yeah, giving you a plus one <laughs> to this will save. Is that how it works? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. And from under Wilhelm's garbs, the, the warding tattoo starts glowing and Ooh. he seems almost a bit bigger and 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 stronger while while this lasts, which isn't long, but it works. And he Are gets another plus one. You're activating the warding tattoo? Yes, I'm going to use my reaction to activate the warding tattoo, which gives me a plus one to my next save and a plus one to my AC. And again, resistance two to any sort of damage, except against fiends. There, I gain a resistance of five. But this is not a fiend, so it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. so that's here comes the will save. Oh, Natural sixteen for thirty-five. That is a pass. But the spell the creature cast was confusion, and on a success, the target babbles incoherently and is stunned. One. Stunned one will mean on your next turn you only have two actions, Wilhelm. So that is the creature's first actions that it does. It's third it's action. It's going to stroll up to Lupin and with its fourth action is going to swing with its battle axe. Wicked, doesn't need a wank. Oh. With a natural 18. Oh, that is just a hit. It doesn't quite meet for a crit. Because um, he's frightened! Because he's frightened! Yeah, he's frightened as as well. he swings, um, the <gasps> amulet in Lupin's hands glows, and you see a what looks like almost a shield come up across Lupin. Um, he's used his reaction, Amulet Surveillance, which allows me or a target within 15 feet to gain resistance to all damage against the triggering damage. Resistance is equal to 2 plus my level, so that's 13. Okay, well, here comes the damage for you, Lupin. Not brilliant. That doesn't uh, quite seem so right, does it? <laughs> Just hit with a battle axe and... Oh, uh, no, there's, I'm there's, a, there's a mistake on... The yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we should actually be rolling 4d12, yeah? Uh, Plus yeah, 16. That, that JavaScript... I've already uh, done my comeback. The turn's over. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be 2d8 plus 11... Plus one d six. The plus eleven is missing. Okay, so uh, so seven plus the eleven is eighteen. 
So 18, is yeah. 13. So I take five points of damage. Yep. All right. And that is the end of my creature's turn. Okay. Good long round one, but we're just settling in. It is the top of round two, and it is Lupin's turn. So um, having just taken a, a, a mere scratch from this, uh, this tiefling, is, uh, Lupin will, uh, will clutch his amulet a little bit tighter. And uh, it seems to glow a bit brighter, almost like the, the vulnerability is intensifying. So I'm using mechanically intensify vulnerability, which uh, means that I gain the next level of what my amulet is capable of. So okay. in this particular case, uh, the amulet uh, gives me a plus two AC and a uh, plus two to all saves against the target of my exploit in the exploit vulnerability. If anyone is still awake, then... <laughs> <laughs> Look, the things that you don't like aren't, ne- aren't naturally boring. <laughs> All right. Um, so what are you doing? So, so is that uh, action? That's the yeah, first action. So I have uh, basically a plus two to saves an AC against the uh, against this tiefling, and yeah. uh, Lupin will then draw his sword cane back and will take a swipe. And so mm. that is uh, that's a natural eighteen for forty. <sighs> yeah, that's a critical hit. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Oh dear, my boy, this really isn't going your way, is it? No! Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is a uh, that is a 46 oh, points of damage. Gosh! Yeah. Plus, uh, that would be an additional 14 points from the uh, exploit vulnerability. So that's a total of 60 points of damage. 60 points. Ouch. And on a critical hit, I can choose to force the target to succeed at a DC 27 fortitude save or be pushed five feet away from me because Lupin's cane has the impactful rune. Ah, uh, I would, would like you, like you to, to attempt that so. save, please. Yes. Fortitude save. Yes, please. Okay, rolling fort save. Uh, 29. Uh, yeah, that's a pass, so you stay where you are. Okay. Wow, uh, that is a big hit. Is isn't it? I'm, I'm tempted to maybe go for another one. Yeah, fuck it. I've got nothing better to do. Okay, so uh, Lupin will then take a uh, another swing with the sword cane at his first multiple attack penalty. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a natural four for twenty-two. Twenty-two is a miss. <laughs> Just giving you a chance, my boy. That uh, and turn, that's turn. Lupin. Yes. Okay, so you're going to take your persistent damage of uh, three points of bleed. You can roll your recovery check. Uh, yep. Uh, that is an 11, so I have failed, so I will continue to bleed. Okay. All right, thank you. It is Sandra's turn in the southwest corner of this room where the three assassins <laughs> have jumped through the hole in the thatched roof. Sandra, uh, remind me, so she is prone... And she's laughing uncontrollably, yeah. And okay. she's slowed. And what can she do? You well, can't use reactions she... or actions for one round, basically. Yeah. Can't use actions or reactions for one round. It then suffers the failure effect. Failure. Yeah. Okay, so, so out of the battle for this round, is it? Is it what's the there was the Bon Mot as well. Yeah, so the Bon Mot was just for the will. Got a minus uh, for two one to the minute. Will, okay, it? so that stays yeah. on. She stays prone, but she's no longer laughing. Basically, well, she's still laughing, kind of giggling a little bit. I yeah, think. Yeah, I'd say she's not because she's but... she's slowed. She's still slowed. <laughs> so she's like, <laughs> it's, it's a chuckle. It's, it's a chuckle. Yeah, it's a chuckle. Now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, but she's no longer sort of incapacitated, so to speak. She can then yeah, act no. on her next turn. All right, no yeah. problem. Wilhelm, round two, over to you. All right, uh, Wilhelm is going to step in between Aaron and Lupin again, um, just five feet toward the tiefling, so he's within melee reach. And then with his second and last action... <laughs> oh, of course, because you are stunned one. Yeah, um, he's going to attempt a snagging strike against the tiefling. Okay. So that's oof a natural three. Uh, I'm natural three for twenty-eight. That is a miss. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna use my hero point here. Ooh. Just because, why not? So that's going to be... Oh, oh no! no! Another natural three. I love this game. I absolutely love this game. Two I, natural I'm threes in a row. fun right now. So yeah, that is a miss, I'm afraid, Bill. Mm-hmm. That's turn. All right, Malachi, you are up. Uh, okay, I will sustain Inspire Courage. Mambo yeah. number five is still continuing, but he gets a bit angrier with it. And a little bit of Monica in my life. Starts going a bit sort of <laughs> slipknot with it all. And, and casts, <laughs> casts Sound Blast Ooh. into the corner here. Uh, not my assassins. Into your assassins. Can I have, please, a fortitude save from all of them? All three. Okay. Let's roll three fortitude saves. Might not do too much damage, but will be fun. Oh, not. Yes. Uh... Um, one pass and two failures with a 28 and a 23 failing and a 34 passing. Okay, so success is, uh, this is half damage, a fail is deafened for one round, and full damage. Okay, so let me just do full damage for both of those, Ooh, so six bad. points of damage, yeah, I know. and half damage for one, that's 2d10 plus one. And then deafened for a round. Deafened for a round. Failure. Two that failed, yep, okay, I'll just drag on the deafened condition, this is from the Foundry virtual tabletop. So now they can't hear your your songs. Yep. Oh no! <laughs> All my jokes. You've done them a favour. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, congratulations, Chris. You've technically just buffed them. <laughs> <laughs> just for a round. Just for a round. Gotta give them a bit Annoying. of break. Okay, the one, just, the just, give them a break. Just, the one I've just downed one. The one on just the one. But, yeah. Yeah. They are technically immune to any sort of auditory <laughs> effects <laughs> now. <laughs> Just no, for not from spells. Only for them to do with them. Like if you cast a spell from outside, they still. Are he's he's a bard who most of it, most of his attacks are going to have some sort of auditory. Not a, <laughs> no, 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 it's not, not just a bard. I'm not any old bard. bard. We didn't I'm say not, only, I'm not bard. just a bard. No, you're I'm a famous bard. bard. <laughs> I'm a famous bard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a famous bard. Like it. All right, Malachi, you've got one action left. No, that was it. Two actions to cast that. One action to keep up. Inspire oh, courage. and you sustain Inspire Courage. Okay, Aaron yeah. spoke points. Okay, seeing the devil move closer and this congregation of assassins in the corner of the room, Aaron is kind of looking around at all sides and he's just seen this incredible power come out of him, dealing a load of damage, and he's really looking at his hands, kind of surprised at himself. And then realising that the situation is getting tense with so many people here, you see him start to really concentrate and I use my feet, which is called Reach Spell. Ooh. So this allows me to extend the reach of my uh, my spells with range by 30 feet, Ooh. which will allow me to target everybody in the room, except my allies, of course, with a 6th level Slow Spell. <laughs> <laughs> Please roll a Fortitude save for all of your monsters. Right. You know how to kill the fun in this. <laughs> oh no! I just I'm having the most fun I've had. <laughs> Our listeners yeah, are going. Craig, now. you did it to me. Those spells, right? Uh, yeah, okay, coming. right. So the the tiefling for, fortitude. Did you say? Yes, please. Okay, thirty-eight. Thirty-eight is a pass for. Is that the tiefling's roll? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so then DC twenty-nine. Okay, for the first one. Oof. 34 second 34 one plus 22 fail third one natural 20 Ooh, oh now he's rolling now he's rolling I was gonna say, yeah four rolls and you rolled 17 18 and 20 but the okay. gm module okay so the, <laughs> yeah. the tief, tiefling um 29 38 for the yeah. tiefling yeah, so that's a success. So he'll be slowed one for one round. Okay. Same for the second one. Slowed yep. one for one round. Okay. And the fail is slowed one for one minute. And the crit success is fine. Okay, so the one that's prone is the one that's slowed for a minute. Just so you guys know. Of course. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Sandra. Okay, that is my turn. Okay, cool. Thank you, Aaron. It is Rita's turn. 
who is going to she's only got so oh, what's what's this thing oh deafened so she's fine she runs over to malachi drops the bow for second action third action with she's, a drawn is, is she the one she's that not slowed okay, yeah yep. she's the one who quit past. she can see malachi just like mouthing <laughs> so is going <laughs> to attempt to strike with her uh not dagger it's a rapier he has pulled out it's malachi uh 30 to hit will miss okay that's her turn aaron wilhelm and lupin on the other hand from the ceiling drops another one <laughs> 12 giant spiders the donkey comes in <laughs> that dire donkey <laughs> 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 He's commanding animals, isn't he? Yeah. <gasps> you hear this little tittering voice coming from the south of the room. Very high pitched. You hear. <laughs> and out of the ether comes a little red ball. Flying what? towards you as you are the victims of a fireball spell. <gasps> Fun! Get your reflex ready. Oh, and I can get all of you. Yep, good stuff. Okay, everybody roll a reflex save, please. Oh, my days. Fail, Ooh. fail, pass. Okay, Malachi failed, Lupin I'm failed, Aaron right. passed, and Wilhelm passed. Here comes the damage from the fireball. That is 30 points. Can you see that? Nope. Nope, brilliant. Okay, there you go. 30 points of fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear this giggling coming from the south of the room. Aaron, have you still got your true seeing thing? It lasts for 10 minutes and I cast it when we entered. So no. Okay. Thank you very much. It is the assassin's turn who's just watched this. The assassin has only got two actions, but for one action can get to the other side of Malachi and attempt one strike. For a 33 to hit. That is a hit. Very good. And that will be 21 <sighs> points of damage. Not the end, I reckon. Okay. It is now the Tiefling's turn. The Tiefling, of course, that stormed you, that has taken, let's be honest, two massive hits. Okay, I'm going to roll a d4. One, two hits Wilhelm. Three, four hits Lupin. Okay, he's going to swing the battle axe, Lupin, at you for his first action. Yep. Does nice. a 38 hit? Uh, Yeah, a 38 does hit. Okay, here comes your damage. It's plus 11, so... Yep, 17. 17. Uh, You're already yeah. bleeding. Uh, Lupin's amulet will glow again, and that familiar shield uh, pops up. So Lupin has used his reaction to cast Amulet's Abeyance. So take four points of damage. Okay, very good. Second action is going to swing at Wilhelm with the Battle Axe. going to get a plus one to this. Doesn't Ooh. matter though, because it's a natural 20! Mm. Ouch! Yeah, the, ow, the, ow, the ow, ow. Just, just hits. <laughs> mm. Oh, we're warming up now. Oh, this is going to be good. I don't like how happy you, <laughs> you're being right now. He doesn't have a special feature where on a crit he just beheads you, right? Gotta add 22 to this. <laughs> 22 so that, to this? Yeah, 22 to that, yeah, because he's not got the plus 11. It's not being added. Oh, I can't seem to work it out. So, All right, man. Uh, so that'd be 16, 26, 38 points of damage plus 2d6 bleed. That's his second action. Third action... Is he not slowed once from the spell? Uh, he is He slowed, is, but he yes. was also hasted. He is quicker ah, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. moment. So with his final action, he is going to step 
No, he's going to try and move outside. But that will trigger attacks of opportunity, Wilhelm. Do you want to take yeah. yours? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Maybe I'm, I, I might even hit this time. Um, <laughs> so long last time. I'm gonna just try really hard this time. Okay, that's a natural 16 for 41. That is a critical hit. Nice. Ooh, ouch. I like that. Um, that's oh, that's <laughs> a lot of ones. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, lovely. 27 points of damage. 27 points of damage and a total of, um, what was it? He's off guard until the start of my next turn. Mm -hmm. And his armor also takes 3d6 acid damage. Okay, do you want to roll that 3d6 for me? Yeah, that's going to be a total of 7. Minus hardness, of course. So, Okay, he's good on the armor side. All right, and, and because it's a move action, it doesn't interrupt. Is that right? No, Mike? only on interact actions. Okay, cool. So he is going to move outside, back out of the doors you first came through, severely damaged, going to move away from you. But it has laid out a critical hit against Lupin. No, was that against... Who was the hit against Wilhelm? He got a Wilhelm, hit against yeah. Lupin and a hit against Vil, uh, Wilhelm as this tiefling... With the battle axe, it seems to be leaving the main space. That is the bottom of round two. It's the top of round three. Uh, I'm going to take four points, sorry, eight points of bleed damage. Here comes his recovery roll. Not a pass Ooh. this time, only a six. Rolled over Ooh, from the 20 rare. as well. All right, gentlemen, it's the top of round three. Three, the tiefling creature has just left the room. You've been hit by a fireball spell. The assassins are in there. You've heard some kind of creepy laughing from the south of the room. It's Lupin's turn. Okay, so Lupin is stood there, still smouldering slightly from this fireball. And uh, <laughs> you, hear, you hear a, a clang as he drops his uh, his sword cane. You, tiefling, tiefling. What? You're talking uh, to me. There's a lot going on. You've seen I've yeah. put my weapon down. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, has he got a gun? Now, to tell you the truth, I've forgotten myself in all this excitement. Being this <laughs> is a Horrig 44. The most powerful yes. handgun in Absalom. I will blow your yes. head clean off. You've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? <laughs> well, do you? Punk. I'm not sure if it's a role-play moment you want me to reply. Um, and <laughs> Lupin draws his thundering, dueling pistol and takes aim at the retreating tiefling. So, As, I'm going to assume you're going to fire, Jason. Uh, I am absolutely going to fire, okay, yes. Okay, before you take that hit, so the tiefling does see you draw it. Yep. And in a kind of slightly panicked look on his face <laughs> as you draw the pistol, manages to get his hand up, his spare hand, and you see him cast a little outline of a rune in the air, which is going to give him a little bit of a boost to his AC against this ranged attack. He is <laughs> ready for you. <laughs> okay, so Neil shouldn't have gone with the speech. Um, <laughs> I've been plenty of time to uh, get the rune up. Uh, yeah. you, you mean for Craig to check the character sheet and, and remember Absolutely. this weird reaction that I would yeah. have forgotten, yeah. Um, oh, 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 he rolled off the 20. He rolled off the 20. That is a natural 8 for a 29. Okay, 29. 29 was his AC. But, but with the quite, defensive rune, okay. it was 31. But because use... uh, he uh... is off guard, ah! it puts it back <gasps> down to a 29. You're welcome, Mr. Uh, Mr. Which means Mr. you are bang on the AC. Yes. Boy. Lovely yes. stuff. Let's go. So the shot rings out oh, and deals 20 oh. points of damage. Is that uh, just piercing, Jason, or how's the damage uh, work That those is piercing. Oh, and with the exploit vulnerability as well, that is the extra uh, seven points of damage on top of that as well. 
So is it uh, so twenty seven like, total? It's nine points of piercing, four points of sonic, and then the an additional seven from the exploit. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So it's yeah, twenty seven total. As he, the bullet grazes his neck, and it's not just a flesh wound, and you kind of see him almost stagger to his knees a little bit. He's not down, but he is near death. I think Lupin's gonna take that final shot, try and put him in the ground. I've done the speech now. I can't just back out. Well, do you have the actions though? Uh, yes. Drop the sword cane as a free action. Drew the gun. Attack. Oh, fired the gun. Uh, Quiet. Yeah. Drew and fired. Yes, I have got one more action. Yep. Uh, Lupin, do you have to reload or do you get that extra shot? Uh, no, I have to reload, which is rather rather irritating. Oh! So his prey lives for another round. Lupin, you are still bleeding, of course. You are going to take two points of bleed damage. Want to roll yep. your recovery check? Uh, hey. That is a natural 18. I would have rather had the natural 18 on the attack and <laughs> failed the recovery check. I bet you would. That is not what the dice gods willed. Meanwhile, in the southwest corner of the room, Sandro has had a bit of a rough day. Her best friend died <laughs> yesterday. She dropped in. <laughs> she's laughing about she's it. Been prone. She's been laughing her head off. She is still prone and under the effects of the Bon Mot. But as far as I'm aware, she is now just slowed one for this round. Yeah, and I didn't. And then is okay. It, so. Yeah. Okay. No, she's she was for a minute. She failed. Oh, she slowed one from your spell. Okay. From my spell, <laughs> yes. So she but she oh, can right. stand up for one action. Certainly can. And can fire her bow for her second action. Is that right? Does she so. not need to pick it up because she fell prone? Or If you fall prone, yeah, you don't drop no. your weapons. No, okay. only if you're unconscious. Only if you die, is it? Okay. If you ever question me again, I will fucking try. <laughs> 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 right, I'm going to target Aeron with this attack. <laughs> <laughs> attack penalty for Sandra for Belinda and rolls a natural 8 for 28 oh that is on my AC yes! and as the arrow comes flying oh, toward oh, oh, Aaron <laughs> yeah. Wilhelm out the air Wilhelm's oh, yeah. instincts kick in and he uses his reaction guardian's deflection <gasps> and with his rapier he flings the arrow to the side Oh, I hate sort of so stepping much. in front of Aaron and increasing his AC by two against this attack. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Look. <laughs> okay. Look at him Let's swim. just just post the feet to chat. Let's have a little chat about this. <laughs> I thought we were trying to make it a bit more fluid. Oh no! It is so perfect. It's the so trigger perfect. is hit by an attack. So what I was thinking is. Is it because you didn't call it? It has to be on the attack rather than the hit. The, the trigger is that it would make a difference. So I have to know if it... I know, it's, yeah. it's annoying. But yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying. What I'm saying is I'm pleased it just about you annoying. general game knowledge, but also annoyed because Sandra, <laughs> who has struggled, has now missed. That is really cool. Come on, have a hero point. Yeah, yes! well done. Thank you, Wilhelm. Brick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love oh, it. Oh, I love it. You so got this right. Okay. So that was Sandra's turn. It is now Wilhelm's turn. All right. And uh, Wilhelm, as he just stepped in and deflected that arrow, sort of gives Aaron a slight pat on the shoulder and goes... You're, you're, you're doing well. And uh, runs, sprints, actually, <laughs> after the uh, after the tiefling. And as he's running, tries to lunge out with his rapier drawn and tries to finish him off with a, yeah, with, with a hit to the to the neck area. Okay. So, so Wilhelm that, goes toe-to-toe with the tiefling. Yes. and that's, Horn to horn, you might say. <laughs> oof. That's a natural 7 for 31. Still a hit. Nice. Because he's still off guard. That's a total of 22 damage. That's pretty Big damage. Well. He's not looking good. Bill Holm, would you like to describe your kill? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and as he runs after the guy who is kept back by the by the 
bullet to his neck. Uh, <laughs> just a tiny bit too long. He sort of, with the running motion, plunges his rapier into the neck of the tiefling, sort of go going upwards, and it reemerges from his head. And he lets him slump down and fall to the ground before Wilhelm... Hmm, what's he gonna do next? He's just gonna run into a defensive position in front of Aaron and Lupin again. And okay. prepare to deflect any other incoming attacks. What a great turn for Wilhelm. Steps forward, takes out the tiefling, and steps back to protect his friends. It is Malachi Bordello's turn. Oh, Wilhelm, you are still bleeding, so you're gonna take four points. Oh, it should be two times that, so eight points. It is damage. already doubled, though, oh. I think. Two times 1d6 is four. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yep. So, Wilhelm, you're going to take four points of bleed, and you roll a 19 on your recovery check. That's not annoying at all. All right, so <laughs> Malachi. No, it isn't. It really is. Malachi doesn't like being in in a assassin sandwich, so he is going to be moving up to his friends towards the north. And starts singing a little, little quiet tune in his head. Closes his eyes a little bit, and soothes himself. Some of the wounds that he's taken, some of the pretty hefty hits, mm -hmm. and casts soothe on himself. At uh, I'm going to go at fifth level mm -hmm. for two actions. And you can cast this at fifth level. Sorry, you can cast this at fifth level. How? Because it is one of my composition cantri uh, signature signature spells, yeah. yeah, which can be heightened freely up to sixth level, which is the highest level that I have got. Fifty-two points healed. Turn DM. Thank you, Aaron. So Aaron has just seen this arrow flying at his face and then deflected, and in a flash, he's seen Wilhelm wasn't even stood next to him. He thought he felt his hand on his shoulder, but then he was gone and killing the tiefling, and it's all happening very quickly. <laughs> and then he remembers that weird giggle. I think there's someone else here. And he casts True Seeing on himself for two actions and is going to try and counteract Ooh. if there is any illusion magic. Okay. So, shall I click this counteract yeah, button? Yeah, there's a counteract button. So, I just want to just before you click it, so the GM rolls a secret counteract check against any illusion or transmutation, but only for the purpose of determining whether you see through it. Okay, and the DC, if there is one, I'm not saying there is, sure. check. Okay, so I'm going to roll a secret counteract check then. You do not see anything, Aaron. Okay. Then for my third and final action, I'm going to cast Guidance on Wilhelm. Um, so just as he returns to my side, Aaron puts his hand on Wilhelm's shoulder just like he did to him and says, uh, You're doing pretty good too. And you get Guidance, which will give you a plus one status bonus to one attack roll, saving throw, or skill check. I feel you guided. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. It is Rita, the assassin's turn, who is still deafened, was it, for a minute? She was slowed for a minute. Okay. Um, has the rapier drawn, so will move forwards towards Lupin and attempt to strike with the rapier it's a Oof. natural 19 for 39 to hit uh, yes that is going to hit brilliant okay not bad damage 17 points of piercing damage Ow. Oh, good evening and then <laughs> we'll take another wild swing with the natural five that's a 20 to hit uh, that is a critical miss okay from the south of the room you hear again <laughs> you will stood next to each other again. <laughs> As you see another little red ball come flinging out. And again, it's going to get all of you. As a fireball spell erupts 
in the room. Can I get reflex saves from all four of you, please? That's a 31 for Lupin. 22 for Aaron. 26 Malachi. Wilhelm swording to two starts glowing once again. And it's going to be a 39 total. Wilhelm, that is a critical success. Lupin, that is a pass success. Aaron and Malachi, they are fails. Aaron, as a reaction, as this fireball comes in, wheels around, and from his hands, a funnel of shadow emerges and tries to suck up some of the fire, preventing some of the damage. Wow. So I will need to try and roll a counteract check Ooh, against okay. this, and if it's successful then basically it will only deal half damage to those who would be damaged by the spell. So anyone so around that, you? Yeah, if anyone. So me and uh, I think the, all three of us, one of us crit passed. So, so Will, Wilhelm not damaged. relevant. Lupin was going to take half damage. You were both going to take full damage. So he'll take half damage regardless, but me and Malachi. I'm is, it, try uh, and is it? Is he going to take half of the half? Or doesn't or does it not stack? Oh, um, yeah. So it's any any creatures yeah, that yeah. would be damaged by yeah, the spell. Yeah, it would be ha- yeah, half, it'd be half of the half. Yeah, you're right. Half of the half. Well, that's okay. That's so, nice. But you have to roll the counteract check. I do attempt to counteract the target spell. So this is a fifth level counteract, but it's treated as two levels higher for this attempt. Oh wow. Okay. So, so a seventh level. Yep. Okay. Roll your. I'll check. click it. Instead. I'm not sure if it'll do it at 7th level, but let's try. So that'd be a 29 at 7th level. Is that right? It should be. I can't tell whether it's rolling You successfully it counteract the fireball spell. Right. So here's the damage. 23 points it. of fire damage. So yeah, uh, if you're going to take a quarter, I think, well, Lupin. Well, so 6. Yeah, 6 points of damage. Because I'll have to round up yep. slightly. Yeah, yeah. 69 Great HP. Nice. Reaction there. Is that a once a day thing, Matt? Or no, is that's that a, a fifth level spell. So I've never seen that before. Oh, you've it's used the fifth level spell. But it counts spell. as two yeah, levels higher. Wow. Shadow Siphon. So particularly good because it affects anyone that's damaged by the spell because it affects the spell rather than the people. So I don't need to be able to target the people. And I take one point of damage. why is that malachi well i have a certain harrow card called the brass dwarf that gains 11 fire resistance wow so it would have been 12 but it knocks it all the way down to one okay cool so you hear this giggling and then it is the mercenary's turn that is kind of fairly near to malachi as well uh, she is going to move over to here and attempt to strike with the rapier. She is slowed one, so this will be her only attack. 29 to hit. To me, yeah, that's a miss. Okay, it's the top of round four. It is Lupin's turn. You've managed to take out the tiefling. You are getting hit by fireballs, but there are still three assassins in the room. However, disabled they are due to various deafening, hideous laughters. They're, no, they're no longer deafened now because it was oh, only around. Okay. Turning around, they're not deafened anymore. Okay. Lupin is going to turn his attention to the assassin or mercenary that is stood next to him and is going to attempt to exploit vulnerability. So he's going to have a look. Uh, he's going to take a look at uh, which one is this? Sorry, I, I forget the names. Is this Rita? As do I. Uh, which one are you targeting? The one right <laughs> uh, next to The one to immediately to, to my side. Yeah, ne- yeah, it's kind of next to the Harrow Barrow, next to the room where yeah. uh, D-Rail is currently hiding. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that is uh, Rita, that one. Uh, Lupin uh, will attempt to exploit vulnerability. One second. Uh, that is a natural six, but that is a success. That is a success, yep. yeah. It appears that there are no weaknesses or resistances, so uh, he will again use personal antithesis. Lupin grabs from his pocket what looks like a small scrap of... Uh, almost looks like sheet music. And uh, just at the very top, you can read the words uh, Mambo number six. Are <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you stealing my thunder? <laughs> 
he yeah, he will exploit vulnerability on uh, on Rita there, and then for his second action, uh, he will at point blank range uh, point this pistol at uh, at Rita, and oh. will envision to use the energized cartridge talisman that is attached to the pistol. Do you get any bonuses for it being point blank? Or uh, she it, does it? not. No. Mm. Uh, and this will be. Uh, I'm going to use. Acid, not that it really makes an awful lot of difference. So Lupin will take aim and uh, fires his weapon. Uh, oh dear, that's a natural 19. Oh god, yeah, that's a critical hit. Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Rita is going to take. Uh, so she's going to take double the antithesis damage as well, so it's an extra 14. So she's going to take 65 points of damage. Ouch. 65 points of damage. It's a mix of acid and sonic. So yeah. all the bullet damage becomes acid, does it, then? When it appears to be that way. Yes, that seems cartridge. to be the way. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And it's a critical hit, and it has to succeed at a fortitude save. Yes, a DC or uh, 24 fortitude save. Oh, she's deafened for one minute, but she passes and is otherwise okay. fine. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and then for his uh, final action, Lupin's going to shout, spacing, spacing, and is going to uh, move away from the rest of the group somewhat. It's Sandra's turn in the southwest corner. Still slowed one, but can now drop her bow and then run up. And draw her rapier. But that is her turn. <laughs> That's all she's got. Rushes up towards the group in the middle of the room. She's been there for ages, having been prone and laughing and what have you. Good hit point still. Not really been hit, but been out of the combat. Rushes up, is slowed one. And yeah, they weren't both um they weren't both slowed one forever, were they? Only... No, it was only one of yeah, them. It was, yeah, it was. You rolled minute. really, really well on those. Yeah, it was only one. Yeah, of them so this for a one is. So it is Sandra who was slow. Okay, cool. Right, it is round four still, and it's Wilhelm's turn. All right, for his first action, Wilhelm is gonna is gonna feel very guided in his attempt to search for whatever oh, keeps yeah. throwing those fireballs, and he's gonna attempt a seek action in a 30 foot cone in front of him which is this area so he's gonna roll a perception check against if it's an illusion spell the spell dc and if he succeeds the creature is hidden but no longer undetected so he knows which square it is in he, he would have seen where the fireball came from right which general, di which direction, general maybe, direction it but came from yeah, Craig said from the south, which is pretty Maybe. much what Wilhelm would have gathered. You're taking the seek action. Okay, so it's a secret perception check. And I see your cone right. that you are wanting to seek in. Go right, ahead and yeah. roll that secret perception check. All right, that's you, going to... You can probably angle that cone a little bit more to capture the whole of the south. Um, I don't know how I can do that in Foundry. Hold on. Like this. Ooh, that's nice. Like that. Ooh, but what if, what if is that one square in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm. Uh... Okay. So where do you want it? Yeah. There? Yeah, I'm gonna look straight to the south and uh... right. So I'm gonna attempt a secret perception check for me. So Kimoni is uh, attempting to seek if there is an invisible creature, as they suspect. They have to roll against its perception DC. No. Uh, stealth DC, stealth DC except, sorry. except if it's some sort of spell effect, then it's the spell DC. Then against the spell DC. Okay. So he has to roll a secret check, which I can now see. And I can't tell him when he was successful or not. I can only tell him what he sees. And come on, I can tell you with that roll, you do not see anything in your cone of vision. There's nothing there. These fireballs are, are falling from the roof. <laughs> And um, he's gonna uh, once again raise his rapier defensively. Mm -hmm. And with his last action, 
he's gonna try to finish off the vulnerability exploited assassin next to him. Okay. With his snagging strike. So that is... Um, is she flat Put it by anything? No, no? No, no? Uh, no, don't believe that. Okay. Flat-footed. Then that's a 35 total. That is a hit. All right. That's not a lot. That's 14 Ooh. damage. Yep. And she is flat-footed until the start of my next turn. Okay. Or until she moves out of my reach, whichever comes first. Ah, I see. All right. Good to know. Is that turn, Wilhelm? Yeah, that's turn. All right, gentlemen, we're deep in round four. It's Malachi's turn. Malachi starts to seeing even more angry version of Mambo number five. And with that, casts Dirge of Doom that anyone within my area is now frightened at me as I slipknot it up even more. (laughs) What's the area on that? It is 30 feet okay. emanation from myself. Sure. Um, and they cannot reduce that frightening condition and t- if they remain in the area. Got and it. Then, and you can see his eyes go sort of black and he does become visibly more scary as well. Uh, and then he looks at... Um, what was her name? Who he, he bomb motted at the beginning? It wasn't Belinda. Sandra. Maybe Tracy. That was Sandra. 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 Was Sandra. Sandra. Me too. Who the I'm fuck is Tracy? I'm offended you don't remember my name. I'm a real Tracy's offended. The one. Alice? And Alice? Who the fuck is Alice? <laughs> <laughs> don't give him ideas, please. <laughs> and and again, at fifth at fifth level, he's going to cast Crushing Despair as she he had her in fits of giggles earlier now oh, is going to try and cut her down even further that's a 30 um, foot cone and... on crushing despair so you oh, might okay. get two so of them I get, i'll get two of them then where he's he mocks belinda's death even further the so i roll the will saves it's a crit fail for one of them and a pass so jessica has managed to crit fail and sandra has passed all right, so you cast Crushing Despair. There is a crit fail, which means as failure, the creature's automatically slowed one for one minute. What a shit spell when it says as failure, and then you go to failure and went as success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I've now got to go back up. For one round, the creature can and must attempt another save the start of its turn. Okay, so it is now slowed yeah. one, yeah. and this one is already slowed one. Right. And they're actually crying at the death of their uh, Belinda. I don't know why you did it to me. Poor Belinda. You're a monster. And she points at Wilhelm. You, you did it. She put her weapons down and you rammed her through with your bloody sword. Not entirely sure we're not the bad guys here. (laughs) Okay, Aaron. Okay, I'm going to try something. One of the assassins just here, Aaron is going to lift his staff of enchantment point it at her and casts suggestion she starts to look at him and he says to her someone's hiding in this room you need to help me find them roll a will save here comes the will save that is a fail so they must immediately follow my suggestion for a duration of one minute or until the target has completed helping me find them can I give Matt a hero point for that? <laughs> <laughs> that is a very cool use of the spell. Yeah. That's so good. Let's not all pat each other on the back. It's easy when this point. <laughs> we're not patting each other, we're patting Matt on the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should I think this is worthy of a minute's applause, to be completely honest. <laughs> just yeah, at you least have, one uh, full minute. Uh, hang on a minute, I'll just cast it. I'll cast it now. Bon Mott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Uh, Matt, Aaron has cast the suggestion spell and my creature has failed, which means you're asking it to tell you where this other creature is. Is that right? uh, What I've I've said is there's there's another creature hidden in this room. You need to help me find them. So they need to spend one minute helping me to find where this creature is. Until they find it. So Uh, that could be, for example, if they can't see it, because I presume they can't, they help by seeking and if they see it pointing it out to me and okay. then that would end the spell that's right. kind of what i'm wanting cool 
Have a hero point, Aaron. Yes! yes! Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's my assassin's okay. turn. Okay. I, I st yeah. I've still got an action left. This, oh, but, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to cast Guidance on Malachi. Why, thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> so, really cool use of the suggestion spell. It's the one on the left, so in this room, this is the one nearest to the fireplace that has to follow your advice. Mm -hmm. Spell has a duration of one minute until the target is completed, a finite suggestion. So, what, they have to use all their actions, or...? Yep. Yeah, it's an incapacitation. Ah, okay. But the creature is more than twice the spell's level, so it would count as a failure. Oh. Count as a failure. As a no, success. Sorry, success. as a success. Yeah, it's got in, it's got the incapacitation trait. Is that right? Yeah, it has. And yes. you cast it at level uh, four. Oh, boo his. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm really sorry, Matty. So not only does so with the incapacitation trait, just for the listeners again, if the creature is more than twice the spell's level, which it is, its save result becomes one step better. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, frantic typing. <laughs> did you feel the energy lift then when he was like... I felt it drop when I mentioned the uh, incapacitation trait. Yeah, did, no, you, feel, no, did, I mean, did you feel that just now? You ruined the entire session. <laughs> I, think you should just let, I think you should let's, let it slide. Yeah, let's just scrap the whole thing. Ultimately cool, rule of cool. Because it's a double whammy here. Because not only is the spell going to be less effective, but also he's going to lose the hero point. <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be a leader in some, harsh, in some form. It's annoying as well because in a combat application, is a success is as bad as a crit success. It literally just does nothing. So I'm just trying to work out because of the at the bottom of the incapacitation trait, where it says if any other effect has the incapacitation trait, the creature of a uh, higher level than the item, because this is being generated by the spell is coming from an item. It's coming from my staff, which is Ooh. a level six item. Yeah, but your staff um, is casting at the start it of the, at a level. At the start of the game, uh, at the start of the day, you gain charges. I do, um, yeah. Equal to my I think, spell levels. Right, which is six, I think. Mm -hmm. So you, you could have spent six charges to cast it at level six, I believe. I'm not sure. No, no, or, no not as a spontaneous. I can't. Does it uh, cast... So, so it's a fourth level, level four? spell. Yeah, it's a fourth level spell, but the item generating it is a level six item. But yeah, yeah so but the spell is still, still is the level. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's gr not grind it to a halt. I try um, to do that. Sorry, Aaron. That is I'm a gonna, really cool spell. I'm going to amnesty hand my hero point back. Thank you. I don't want. <laughs> and I'm going to eat it. I didn't it. want it's it gonna, anyway. It's going to fuel me for this nat twenty that's coming up on the assassin's turn. That is going to step forwards and with her rapier stripe out at Aaron 28 to hit yeah yeah that's a hit nice. and once again while I'm down oh. <laughs> <laughs> no it's with a blade you can't catch it if it's a blade can you and once again as she tries to to strike at Aaron another rapier flings from the side against hers and Brings her off course, <sighs> and she hits the ground. <sighs> the amount of fanfic that's going to be written about Aaron <laughs> will help. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? I'm so confused. What happens? Um, the, the Aaron, attack misses because it, yeah, it gives another... me a plus two, and it oh, it gives you a plus two yeah. to your AC. It gives okay, Aaron a plus two to AC. So all right, it and a miss. she's not slowed, so she will take another hit. A natural two for a seventeen, so that's a critical miss. Rolled off the twenty again. Okay, here comes the acid damage. That's six points of persistent damage that I take, and a natural seventeen on the persistent roll. Just to keep things standard, you know, return back yeah, to standard. it. Standard. And from the well, I'm not going to tell you, but coming flying towards you, you see yet another fireball spell come flying out towards you. Everyone needs to roll a reflex save. Spread please. the fuck out, guys. 
How many level, <laughs> level three spells does the ceiling have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a natural 17 for 37 for Lupin. 28 for Aaron. Fuck! Um, <laughs> ooh, I have a hero point. I'm going to use it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Malachi. Malachi, can, I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna do another siphon if you want to save your hero point. I already used oh, it. And it's oh, one more. Oh, so it's a three now. Okay, so just before you do that, Aaron failed. Malachi passed. Lupin passed, and Wilhelm failed. Okay. So now you roll your counteract check. I do. Oh, guy rolled over from a fourteen. And that is not going to be enough. Okay. It is a counteract level of seven, so as long as it's a failure, you said. Yeah. So as long as, it, as the spell's level is lower than seven, it's a success. Lower than seven? Oh, uh, okay. Then it is a success. Ooh, nice. Uh, okay. Here comes the damage on the fireball. Twenty-four week. points. Okay. Half I've rolled week. so low on these fireball uh, spells. It's you fucking have, depressing. I'm very appreciative of it. <laughs> you hear this kind of <laughs> again and it is the assassin's turn and it's the one that's right next to malachi and she is slowed but she's got a rapier drawn she's going to move around to get round malachi to make you off guard and strike with the rapier for her final action at a 34 to hit that is a hit and that's 22 points of damage, including sneak attack. Okay, it is now round five. It's Lupin's turn. Yes, so uh, Lupin is going to uh, see the, the assassins starting to... Start a couple of them, well, one of them, Rita is starting to look a bit ropey. So he's going to aim the pistol again and is going to uh, take a shot. Have you reloaded it, Jason? Uh, no, because I used the energ energized cartridge last round. Oh. And that means you don't have to reload it. Is that right? I, I'm presuming it doesn't, because it's a it's a talisman, and it's if you want to rule that it requires a reload, I'm happy to. No, let's just go with it for now. I'm going to oh, make yeah. a little nook. Yeah, that's fine. That is a natural 14 for 34 to hit. Critical hit. Oh yes, 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 yes. Because critical hits are lovely with the dueling pistol. Uh, that is. <laughs> Plus the exploit vulnerability, that is 68 points of damage. And the assassin goes <laughs> down dead. Ah, little bits of Rita are what I see. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! That's a hero point. That's a hero point. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, you fucker. <laughs> we should just call them comedy points from now on. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, Lupin will then reload. Okay, Lupin reloads. Yeah, Lupin reloads and then move a little bit further towards the back of the room. That is turn. Thank you. Okay, it is the assassin's turn. There are so many creatures on the field still. There's like a kind of bunch of people. We've got two assassins, Malachi, Wilhelm and Aaron all in close succession. There is one dead assassin there. And of course the dead tiefling is outside the front door where you came in. Uh, this one is going to target Malachi with its rapier. It's only got two attacks, but Malachi will be off guard to this one with a natural oh, 15. Yeah, that's a hit. That's okay, 35. 35 to hit. 21 points of damage and goes again for a second hit. Oh, a natural 19, 34 to hit. That's another hit. Excellent. Okay, 21 points of damage. Really good turn for the assassin there. Malachi, what's your hit points looking like? Uh, 41. Okay, good. It's Wilhelm's turn, who's also right in the fray. Wilhelm is going to attempt to strike the assassin that just now hit Malachi twice. Yep. Uh, and he's going to... One to the south. Right, yeah. The one closer to the to the wall that sprays us with fireballs. Um, and, uh, right, he's going to attempt a snagging strike so that is going to be natural 19 43 to hit critical hit nice that is going to be 36 points of piercing and acid damage and yep. she is flat-footed until the start of my next turn okay and 
then as he pulls the rapier back, he tries to sort of um, show, yeah, he, he just stabs a second time. Fuck it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, start okay. laying out some damage now. Yeah, that's a natural 12 for 31 to hit. That is a hit. Nice. Uh, 15 points of damage. All seems to go through. And with his last action, he is going to... He's going to step... Uh, no, he's not. Fuck it. I'm going to raise my rapier and uh, increase my AC by two. Thank you, Vilhelm. Malachi. I'm going to sustain the dirge of doom as he continues to sing really loudly. Here's a question. Haste. If I cast haste on myself, yep. do I get then to move? Or does it go after that? No, it's... It can't, no, you gain actions okay. at the start of your turn. Yeah. Right, okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So I'll keep up Dirge of Doom. I will move over into the corner of the room, run away. Well, not quite a run away, I don't think. Okay. The so Malachi moves yeah. out of the uh, flanking position from the assassins. I do. In fact, I will actually just move to here. Okay. And then I will use my kitar to my battle kitar and smack the corpse in front of you. Okay. Oh, it's corpse, is it? Oh, right, yep. okay. Oh, right. <laughs> Giant skull and the bit like it's as dead as the giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> um, did Malachi not... Did he turn to rock after he fa- fell out of doctor school? I knew it was coming, and I thought yeah. he's not going to hit him corpse. Cook. Yeah, let him, let him go. So, Malachi, you hit the corpse. I can save her. Hit. I can save her. She's still breathing. I'll tell you now, it's AC is lowered. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hit points. Oh, God. <laughs> Would you like to spread pretty much one move? No, I, st- I still need to move. Okay. Yeah, I've got one action remaining, uh, which I will. Not any potions. Still got guidance. Gui- remember guidance. Yeah. Oh, I have. I'll get a potion out. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I have. I'll get a potion out. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. <laughs> He's so guided getting that potion out. <laughs> he knows exactly where it is in his bandolier. Yeah, it is my creature's turn. I'm going to need Wilhelm and Malachi to roll me reflex saves as this bolt of electricity comes shooting towards you. And you notice it emanates from the west part of the room. That's bad. Okay. M- Malachi, yeah? Malachi and Wilhelm, roll me reflex saves, please. Natural three, that's good. That's a fail. Wilhelm. Oof, that's a 28. Two fails. Here comes the damage. Oh, oh, that's low for 4d12. That's 15 points of electricity damage. 4d12 and I got 15. That's not fair. (laughs) Okay. It is the assassin's turn. The one next to Aaron with the rapier drawn. And he's going to swing... The natural 1939 to hit. Oh, uh, yes, that is a crit, I believe. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I had uh, Malachi selected as well. So that is a 39 to hit. What's your AC? 28. And Wilhelm's rapier <laughs> comes in to save the day once again. <laughs> Turning <Yay>! that crit. <laughs> Turning that crit. <laughs> Into a regular hit. Okay, that's still good. That's still good. Second hit from the assassin against Aaron. 27 to hit. My AC is 28. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing you can only use that deflection as a reaction. Is that a one-off? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a one-off thing. That okay. is a hit, yeah. No, your AC is 28. It's 20, it was 27 yeah, to hit. 27 to Sorry. To Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I can't do maths. Okay, it's round six. Lupin, you were to the north of the room. You retreated out of what you were assumed to be fireball range as an electric bolt shoots Wilhelm and Malachi. Aaron, I've missed you out. Sorry, but uh, over to you. Okay, Aaron is going to, from where he is, do a seek action to the west of the room. Yes. Um, to in this kind of area. Yeah. Uh, to see if I can observe where the mysterious giggling is coming from. Okay, so roll a secret roll perception secret. check. Okay. Okay, you, you look carefully, Aaron, and again, you do not see anything. 
from where you are looking on the map in your 30 foot cone then I will re-angle my gaze to look in that direction Okay. so I'm capturing the kind of southwest of the room and I will roll my perception check again okay so another seek action Aaron yet again you do not see anything to the southwest of the room incredible okay then Aaron is going to flee uh, to get out of range Aaron moves himself out of immediate danger it's the top of round six now Lupin uh, Malachi you're going to heal yourself up with a potion aren't you Yes, I am. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I won't, with all love in the world, then I won't worry about you because you've got that in hand. What I will do then is I will take aim at uh, the assassin that is stood that is stood to the north of Wilhelm. So I will exploit vulnerability. So I will uh, I will take another I will take another look at that sheet and uh, see whether I can spot the name on Mambo number eight. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, one second. Oh, it's a natural three. That is a fail, Lupin, I'm afraid. Okay, that's fine. I will go again. Okay. Uh, so I will attempt that again. Natural nine is enough. And although there are still no weaknesses or resistances... That's fine. I will choose to exploit the personal antithesis. And mm-hmm. then for uh, final action, uh, Lupin will take a strike with the uh, pistol. Ugh, oh, that is a natural four gosh. for 24. That is a miss. A wonderfully effective turn. Thank you, Lupin. It is the assassin's turn to the south of Wilhelm that's got its rapier drawn and rather than move, it's going to swing out with a natural one. Yes. Where's the crit cards? (laughs) Okay, and with its second action and last action, we'll swing out again with a 34 to hit. Just hits. Yeah! Okay, let's get some damage on Wilhelm. Here we go. 14 points of damage. And it is Wilhelm's turn. He's looking really hurt. He's looking really hurt. Okay. All right. Wilhelm is going to spend his first action seeking in this sort of... Try Maybe try the north of the room. It could have moved after casting the lightning bolt. The I'm north of the room sure, would be though. that area could have moved to i'm gonna try to do this okay to cover some ground that aaron might have missed all right and use a seek action toward the west side of the room wilhelm you don't see anything whatever it is it scares me <laughs> and uh wilhelm just takes a few a few hits at the woman that's south of him the assassin the natural 13 that's 37 37 is a critical hit. Oh! oh. Uh, 33 points of damage. And the assassin goes down. Hey! hey. And there pointing his attention to the last assassin standing, he raises his guard and ends his turn. Okay, thank you, Wilhelm. Malachi, it is your turn. You're sitting there, not too healthy, with 30 points. If you listen carefully, you can hear. <laughs> he just da- downs his elixir of life that he's got he's got in his hand for 34 points of healing to himself the malachi downs a potion of elixir of life moderate for 34 but then healing. also sees that will helm took a mighty blow in the previous last couple of seconds and starts singing the jigglypuff theme tune <laughs> from Pokemon <laughs> and I need to hear Malachi's rendition <laughs> do you <laughs> he does not disappoint <laughs> not sure I disagree with that you can take 62 oh, nice. points of feeling wow and you get some you get some spell effect as well so you get a plus two status bonus to saves against mental effects, if there are any. Oh, that's nice, nice, nice. Okay. Very nice, Malachi. Is that your turn? That is my turn. Aaron, you're up. I need to try and figure out where this thing is. I, I really hope it isn't that we've just missed one single square. I think I'm. Sh- I reckon 
Craig's been a sneaky fucker, and he knows that for the lightning bolt, obviously, that can only be cast in a straight line, so he could only have been roughly where you stood right now to the cast that. The only square I think we've missed is this one, in the t- literally I, in I the think corner. But he could have moved, because if we're working on the assumption, he's got three actions, yeah? yeah? Lightning bolt is two actions, he's then got a full move. If he's got, say, 25 feet of movement, he could be like the very north of the room. Okay. I, and Craig's a sneaky fucker, and I know that's exactly what he'd like to do. <laughs> Assuming we haven't failed our seek actions. That's also possible. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, from where I am, I'm going to try and seek. Uh, I just think this really precise cone is just not not doing it for me in the context of this real life situation of just <laughs> looking in the direction. <laughs> I hate the game, hate the player. I... Oh no, we hate the player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take okay, um I am gonna I'm gonna move Oh I'm gonna move up a little bit to the north and then I'm going to do a thirty foot cone of perception back towards the doorway covering on most of the north. <laughs> there. Uh, okay. I'll roll my secret perception. Roll your secret check. perception check. You do not see anything, Aaron. It's going to be right here. Right fucking here. Okay, uh, and then for my third and final action, I'm going to I'm gonna punch out in this square. <laughs> <laughs> Directly in front of you? No, I'm, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to do another perception check, but not... I, I want to... Because if she giggled again, which she did... What direction of the room? I want to ascertain which direction of the room it's coming from. So not as precise as a seek action. I don't expect to know what square she's in, but the giggle I want it to indicate where in the room she is. Okay. Roll your secret perception check. I mean, you're pretty sure the giggle came from around the fireplace. Okay. Oh, Only okay. some dickhead hadn't talked to you about searching there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> Wilhelm. Hmm? Yes? In your ear. Oh no! A voice say. (laughs) I'm going to kill you. As you feel this flurry of four daggers come swinging (gasps) out at you. Oh Oh, no. No way you can be flat footed to it. Oh, you're 100% flat footed to this. He just told you. He just whispered in his ear. Yeah, she. Yeah. <laughs> she just told me. Don't waste time. We've already left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes the hit. There's a 36 hit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you take 20 points of piercing damage. Okay. You take 20 points of piercing damage. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. You take 20 points of piercing damage as you feel these little daggers chick, 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 come crushing in towards you. Then you feel another one. Does a 23 hit? No. All right. It's the assassin's turn. And this assassin is going to move and trigger the attack of opportunity from you, Wilhelm. Yeah. Chris, you didn't extend your Dirge of Doom, did you? I did not. So that's off. He drew drew a potion. I'm just going to make sure that... No, I I downed it and then healed Wilhelm. Okay, cool. So, Wilhelm, Ah. the assassin's turn that's next to you is going to move... And Vilhelm is going to attempt an attack of opportunity. Go for it. With a 33 to hit. That is a hit. And with 16 points of damage total. And as the creature moves behind you, it is going to take an attack as you are going to be flat-footed to this. 33 to hit. Hits. Okay, but you do need to take sneak attack on that, which is not dumb, which is going to be another 2d6. So 16 points of piercing damage plus another 3 points of piercing damage. All right, boys, it is round 7. Lupin, you're up. Yep, uh, so Lupin is going to uh, take aim at the target of his exploit vulnerability, the assassin, which is now uh, no, next the to remaining Vilhelm. assassin. Oh, shit, I can't remember if I reloaded I didn't yeah no I did fire last turn and missed so yeah it's first action reload uh, okay. second action take the shot uh, that is a natural 14 for 34 that's a hit uh, that is 
15 points plus 7 points of exploit vulnerability, okay. so that's 22. Yep, got it. And then final action, Lupin is going to seek himself. And mm-hmm. he is going to seek in the area immediately to the north of Wilhelm. Okay. Roll your uh, secret perception check. Yep. Lupin, you see the faint outline of a creature in this square here. And Bloody hell, creature, boys, it's right there. Look, look. I'm going to just show you the art of this creature. I'm going to show all of you this, but, bear, you know, metagame bearing in mind. But I just want to show you what Lupin sees the outline of. <gasps> mm. yeah. Okay, oh. so it's like... He sees a creature with multiple limbs, at least three feet, three arms. That is multiple baggers. Horrendous. Three feet. Why would you want three feet? So it's Weird. basically if Goro, Gollum... And the characters from Magicka all had like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sebulba from the pod racing. No, it's got two feet and four arms. You can't really make it out, obviously. It's invisible. But you do know what square it's in. Was that your second turn action? Uh, no, that's, that's turn. Ah, so no one else knows it's there. No, I, I you called can't... out. Is that, yeah. or is it, does it no, you can't because to... you have to point out action. for an action. Unfortunately. Uh, that's... Okay, fine. So Wilhelm doesn't know the creature is there. Wilhelm, but you do know you were hit from behind and you would know... He knows would, he was hit know. from behind and he knows he was flanked, so he definitely knows the creature is there. Just so we're clear, you are going to be subject to the DC 11 flat check, whereas if Lupin yeah, had sure. done the point out action, I believe it drops it to the DC 5. That's completely fine. So, um, Wilhelm completely ignores the assassin south to him and takes every chance he can get to... Ooh, he's going to try... A snagging strike first, so that is. Uh, I'm gonna roll the flat check first, so I don't so I don't get disappointed. Which is a uh, 13, so that's a success. Okay. So Wilhelm attacks with the 36 to hit. That's a hit. Nice. It's gonna be 16 damage, and if it is a fiend, it's more. But how yeah. much more? Uh, 1d6 more. Just in case. Mm-hmm. Just in case, roll 1d6, or yeah. that would be an additional two damage. And with his second action, he's going to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's oh. and 10 for the DC 11 flat check. So uh. he misses. And for his third action, he's going to seek the space right in front of him so that he notices when it moves away. I'm not sure that's how it works, chap. Anyone else want to dive in on that? But I'm pretty sure if it moves, you're going to have to reseek. No, because if it's no longer undetected, it's hidden. If it moves, it doesn't become undetected again. It would have to. It would have to then perform a it stealth to, action. And, yeah, it'd have to take it yeah. to, hide. to hide. And okay. and and there would need to be some something to take it to undetected. Got it. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to try to seek. All right, go for it. Secret perception check. Uh, Wilhelm, you notice it so much that the creature becomes observed to you. Ooh, nice. Ooh. You learn its exact location. You can see it clearly and perfectly for the duration until the end, until the beginning of your next turn. All right, Malachi, you're up. Malachi hasn't seen the creature at all, has he? No. So he's going to try and continue to bring down Tina and this time he's going to at fourth level cast agonizing despair as he continues to really talk down Tina with a will save please 23 it's DC 30 so that's a fail okay frightened two yeah I frightened two and will take this amount of damage 22 points of damage she is looking very rough Aaron you're up Aaron is going to seek in that direction by Wilhelm. I'll roll my check. You do not see the creature. Are you joking me? Should have gone to spec savers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You have seen me hit this square, so maybe. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't be upset with you going to go and try and target it, but yeah. No, I'm. I, I need to be able to because I'm just. If if it moves again, and I yep. lose track of it, I just yep. yeah, I'm just gonna go again. 
This time you do see the creature, Aaron. You also see this shadowy outline of this horrific creature that has three arms and three legs. Okay, excellent. Four arms and four legs, I'm not sure. So now that he sees it, and that's two of my actions used, that's limited me a little bit because I have used two actions. So as a spellcaster, that's pretty debilitating. So I am going to... Uh, Wilhelm knows where it is, uh, so I'm going to... Do, 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 Lupin knows where it is as well? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, oh, God, you're too far away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am just going to uh, shield myself. I'll cast a shield spell for my final action and stay okay. where I am. Wilhelm, you can see the creature clearly as it attempts to move over towards Aeron. I'm going to let you roll an attack of opportunity if you want to take it. Thank you very much. I do want to take it. Ooh, that's a natural 18 for 42 Ooh. to hit. That is a critical hit. <gasps> yes! Yes, yeah, go on. Ooh, pretty bad rolls. Uh, 29 damage. In case it's a fiend, it's an additional 10 damage. Okay, thank you very much. The creature moves, and it moves. Um, Wilhelm, you will know it moves to this square here. It is then going to cast a spell. Wilhelm and Malachi, you're going to need will saves, please. Is this a fear effect? No. Aw. <laughs> yes, get in. 37. Critical Natural 17. success for Malachi. <sighs> Natural and 20. Critical success yes. for Bill Come on. Come on. It is the assassin's turn that is looking really quite rough, but it's going to keep swinging. It's right next to Wilhelm. It can't really. Um, it can apply the poison for one action, and then for its second action, we'll go for Wilhelm with a 31 Eesh. to hit. I am no longer flat footed, but. Oh, it still hits just just barely. Just okay, barely. so you take 28 points of piercing damage plus precision plus another 7 That's poison damage. Wait, why do I take precision? Uh, sneak it. Oh, it's put sneak it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not flanked anymore. Okay, so take off 10 from that then. 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is its turn. Lupin. Lupin reloads. <clears throat> reloads his pistol. I'm okay, get out the fucking way! And uh, moves, uh, has to move closer because the bard has stuck his head right in Lupin's line of sight. He thinks about it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, takes aim at the assassin next to Wilhelm. Okay, roll to hit against the assassin that you can see. That. Yes, uh, that is 13 for 33. That's a critical hit. Oh, lovely. Uh, what's this one's name? This Tina. was this one's name. It's, it's been Tina, Rita, who knows? <laughs> A little bit of everything. Yeah. That is 33 plus 14 <laughs> is 47 points Takes of damage. Takes the shot right in the ribs and is looking really unwell. It's annoying. I was hoping that would be fatal. I've got one action left. So Malachi is going to... Uh, Malachi? No, Lupin is going to move uh, over here to the west near the fireplace. And that is turn. Wilhelm, you're just five feet north of the lone assassin that is left, but you can also see this horrible outline of this creature standing to the west of you, although um, you will lose that benefit at the end of this turn. The creature to the south of you, the assassin is looking weak. Rita or Tina, what do you do? Completely ignoring the assassin, Wilhelm charges into a flanking position with Lupin. You're not going to get and... flanking because Lupin can't see it. Oh, man. Okay. I, I thought Lupin succeeded at the seek. Yeah, but it's not yeah, a critical it's, it's success. Not hit, it's not hidden, so... though, has it? it it's it's invisible. Hidden. Yeah, it's not undetected. Yeah. It's yeah. it's hidden. But he still knows. No, he doesn't. He's, the creature's he, moved, right? You still know but what square it is. He still has to take an action to hide act to be hidden again, doesn't it? it? Yeah, right. Unless, I, unless I'm misunderstanding I so. how it works. No, I believe that's true. Uh, so what are we saying? The creature moved, though, so not the same square from when it was detected. Sure. It, it... My interpretation is he would get the benefit of being hidden, so you have to roll the DC 11, but you know yeah. what square it is in to target it because you can see it's a right. very faint outline. So then let's move on from that, and let's say that Jason does know he's in this square. 
is that going to impact the flanking ability? Sure, yeah. Because Lupin poses a threat, doesn't he? Is that effectively? Yeah, you what still a, have to roll the flat is. check. Yeah, you still have to pass that flat check. So attack, yeah, who yeah, does? But, but Lupin's Wilhelm. not attacking. Anyone attacking. Wilhelm attacking. No, no. Right? Wilhelm poses a threat, so it is flanked. But I still have to roll the DC eleven flat check. Here's how we're going to roll it. If you want to do the flat check against the the flanking bonus, Wilhelm, you have to roll the DC eleven flat check in order to get the flank bonus. If you fail it, you'll get a normal AC. If you pass, he will get the flat-footed. If you don't, you'll get the normal bonus. That's how I'm rolling it. Sure. Okay. Yep. All right. Fine. So then Wilhelm is going to go into a flanking position with Lupin and attempt to flank the creature. Okay. So you just rolled a nine for your flat check, which means you won't get the flank bonus, but you can still roll to hit. All right, then. Then I'm going to attempt a strike without a flat check um so that is going to be a 37 to hit that's a hit nice for a total of 22 damage okay have you got another action and i have one last action sure which i'm gonna use to (laughs) raise raise wilhelm's guard you just spent the action to point him out (laughs) Ah, oh, no, fuck you guys. I don't care. Malachi, you're up. <laughs> I, I guess I'll spend an action to seek. <laughs> <laughs> Go I for mean, it. we technically do know that we'll have attacked this square. Yeah, I do know that. I'm, get, I'm hoping the DM will give me some sort of bonus. Okay, to roll a secret no. check. <laughs> um, <laughs> secret Right in check. if you've got any views on <laughs> hidden and <laughs> On any of this. And in a secret perception. You do manage to see the creature, so he is now hidden to you in this square. So I can't, I can't observe him in any way. Then can I, if I seek him again, I can't like observe him. Is that a thing? Unless no, you could just, succeed. Just be... All right, I see. Okay, I will then cast. Uh, I will Malachi will cast without really knowing it. He's still quite. Oh no! Have we still. Oh, we still got this one down here, right? Yes. Who yeah. is looking very we, worse? We for are wear. all. We, we've got it at death's door. We only have to kill it to deprive it of three actions, and we're all ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> I will deal with Tina down here. I will f- use my keytar and bring it up like a gun, and from the gun will come a phase bolt. Nice. And I need a ranged attack roll for a thirty-six. That is a critical hit. Ooh. Boom. And I wonder if this will do it. 44 points of damage. The assassin goes down. Is that turn? That is my turn. Aaron, you're up. Okay. So I know it's in between here, but it's hidden to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... I'm going to move down here. And then just being able to vaguely see its outline... The siphon shadow that was uh, Aaron used to absorb some of the energy from the fireballs is still kind of lingering and clinging to his hands as he comes running to the back of the wall here. And then shooting through between Lupin and Wilhelm, he pushes out this shadow in a fierce force blast. And that is going to go in a 50-foot line that goes shooting and destroying all these barrels at the end of the house. And there we go. So that will be a reflex. Reflex. It's gonna roll. As a natural way. twenty. Yeah. There we go. There you. we go. Fucking told you. That's a forty. <laughs> cool. So, that turn, Aaron. Yep, you know it. And as you step forwards, Aaron, and cast this spell, and this creature manages to dodge out of the way. Wilhelm and Lupin and Aaron all manage to see this weird figure dance around the spell and Wilhelm it whispers back over to you and says I've seen you fail before and I will see you fail again but for now I bid you goodbye Blunk! and casts a two action fifth level dimension door and leaves the combat But to end the session...
you are also level 12. You've been listening to Describe Your Kill, The Death of Destiny. Find out more at describeyourkill.com. Thank you to Paizo, Michael Gelfi, Creator Cord, Sirenscape, Kevin McClaude, Foundry and Sigil Services. Get all the links on our website. This podcast uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. Used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. This podcast is not published, endorsed or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com.